Hello everybody, and welcome to the PLO1 PLO of the PLO1 of course being the tier 10 light tank that was released just yesterday. Very quickly to those consumables. The PLO1 is the only tier 10 light tank at the moment, and as such it shares the unique role of having the best acceleration, the best reload, and having quite unique to light tanks an extremely strong turret. This thing's turret can and will bounce every single armor piercing shot in the game. I'm not sure about heat, so don't quote me on that one. Okay, so let's go on to what makes the PLO one special. Let's have a quick look at the upgrade screen. The PLO one actually doesn't have that many um things to go through. It has a 120 mm prototype gun. Its top shell is 677, 667 penetration. That is enough to go through every weak spot in the game, probably bar the Challenger 2s. It has one armor slot, one universal, one mobility, and one firepower. I don't have any money for it. Um, improved armor composition, which gives it that, makes it quite a bit stronger. Two, two ammo choices, one heat, um, it gets improved suspension and improved drive, drive sprockets which gives the tank, which gives the vehicle much improved handling and mobility on rough terrain. It gets an APS with three shots, a smoke grenade launcher, improved air conditioner which increases your crew stats by 2% and very interestingly enough this is a very 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 stealthy tank. It gets thermal camo. which reduces the effectiveness of thermal sights by 30% and increases the vehicle camouflage factor by 5%. It also has a prototype engine giving it almost giving it armored vehicle armored fighting vehicle um, acceleration of 3.45 seconds. This is vastly better than the tier 10 MBTs on its tier. The gun 120mm gun with a reload time of 6.48 seconds. Since I do not have all the retrofits unlocked, it's. Oh, it comes with. Yeah. I will likely go for. Well, I would go for augmented breach lock since that is one of the best firepower retrofit slots. And. Ooh. Probably go for enhanced shell materials as well for the for the rate of fire um, and the accuracy on the move. And then of course, to be honest, this thing's engine seems to get damaged a lot, so it's either a toss-up between internal hull reinforcement and reinforced engine housing. And for mobility, ugh, pick whatever the hell you want. I would go with hull traverse speed since this doesn't traverse that well. Okay, the first thing that anyone wants to say, the first thing that I will tell you is that this thing has incredible armor, okay? Incredible for a light tank. The lower glacis is weak, and that middle bit of the lower plate that, of the upper plate there is weak as well, but this thing has an absolutely trollish gun sight. That little bit there is the only bit of the turret you can pen. Okay, everything else is a bounce, everything. The turret ring, of course, you can fire as well as the driver's hatch, but this thing has ex is extremely well angled. So even just doing a little bit of side scraping when you're moving towards someone can throw off their aim, and if they hit you around that area, they bounce. That is the difference between taking that 1,200 damage hit from their Mata and being dead, lo losing like half your hit points, or bouncing him and being able to get right behind him and start putting shot after shot after shot into his ass. The turret is extremely well armoured as well on the sides, very weak on the rear. One of the other things about the PLO one, um, it seems that Poland, despite having a very stealthy tank, decided to make it the size of a house. Alright, this is the size of the, of, of the PLO one. That's the Abrams. Okay, PLO one, Leopard 2A6. The PLO one is one of, if might not, might even be the biggest vehicle in game. This means that this tank is very easy to hit. 
very 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 easy to hit that means that at all times you should however disregard what I said despite being very well that that hugeness can then come into an advantage as well because that means that you are able to use that 8 degrees of gun depression to get above obstacles and when you do and when you have that turret people are just going to fucking bounce on you all day long good case in point there right I would al I would always recommend Freya because she's cute however um, perhaps actually let's take a look at that camo rating the camouflage rating is 0 0.34 let's have a look at the M8 for example twice as good as the M8 better than the Draco almost as good as the crab that means that you could theoretically take Sabrina who gives you a vision range increase, aim speed and a camo factor and the penalty to camo factor from firing their weapon is reduced by 30% this means that firing your gun 40% it could do well as a pretty damn good sniper but for the most part I would recommend either Freya or Carlos I'd, re I'd recommend Freya for that module damage one last thing to note is its rate of fire compared to the other tier 10s it has the best rate of fire, it fires almost twice as fast as the others and this means that while they will hit you for 800 damage you can often hit them for a thousand or more because you fire twice as fast as they do however I would only use that as an emergency thing because this does not have that many hit points compared to the rest of them 2665 compared to the stock challenger which is 3500 the Amata is 3100 the Leo 2A7 is 3180 the XM1 the XM1A3 is 3400 most of these vehicles have 500 to 1000 more hit points than you do they also have better armor than you do meaning that you gotta hit those weak spots or you gotta go around behind them and since this vehicle is so big being s that often means it's a disadvantage but this tank is a lot harder to play than the other tier 10 MBTs and playing it right will relieve you will make you will, will give you a bigger satisfaction feeling than just playing all the others alright now I've got to find the bloody replay alright I think this is it let's have a look this is the first game I played in the PLO one So I actually had River Point for like the first five games. I was like, "What the fuck, guys?" Um, but I didn't. I I played this tank on the first test server when it was completely overpowered. I mean, literally the entire front hull of the vehicle was was a uh, auto bounce for everything. But it was rebalanced. Um, you can bounce things on the front armor now, but usually not in the middle. Uh, the first part part of this game, I wanted to go. Right, I usually go in an AFE slash light tank, and that's to hit um, MBTs coming down, going down into the highway. So, Challenger 2. Bang. And this kind of early game damage, as well as giving the enemies, as well as reducing the enemies' hit points, can often mean that your MBTs will suddenly get the balls to be able to move up on the enemy. Other Challenger 2 there, penetrating hit. I wanted to shoot that XM1, but oh well. I was kind of in a hold down position here. Um, I wasn't feeling particularly secure about being here on my own. There's also a bathtub to the left. But for the most part, I did about 1,000, 1,200 damage here, so I was feeling pretty good about myself. Unfortunately, a Challenger 2 and a, and a Leopard 2A6 decided to ruin my flood. There's that bounce right there, right off the turret. A Challenger 2 probably wasn't feeling such a happy bunny. Um, another thing to note is that the MBTs do have comparable top speeds, but you will always accelerate faster than they can. So try and use this as a hit and run vehicle. Use that incredible mobility. Look, bounced on my side armor. Do you remember that angling I was telling you about? Yeah, it exists. 
You really have to aim to be able to weaken this thing, and MBTs can't push you around like a normal light tank can. You can, and can do, bounce their shots over and over and over again. And these guys don't know what they're doing. Okay, so a Challenger 2 tries to challenge the ADTU, but, he, but he's quickly like, oh fuck. Um, I tried to move on on him, but to be honest, that Challenger 2, I only recently learned that the ADTU has a weak spot, which is a small bit, which is a small flat plate next to the driver's hatch. I shoot him in the um, Coppola over there doing 300 damage. Well, that, well, that's not the greatest thing to be throwing at people. Hey, at least I'm doing damage, right? And the ADTU pens me. Where do you pen me? Probably in that strip on the front. Which is probably never a good place. Um, but considering I've already bounced two shots from people, I should have taken a lot more. So I'm still really in the fight. I haven't. I mean, I'm, I'm on I'm on 2,000 hit points, but that's like two to four shots. Two shots for a martyr, but four shots for everything else. Look, bounce, look, see, bounce something else on the turret. This thing is hilarious to play. Absolutely hilarious. I would highly recommend this tank. The tanks over there. I was like, oh shit. I'm like, oh god, why do I shoot it? So I was like, oh no, whatever. <laughs> Guns go straight through the thing there. Um, if you can compare this, look, this tank is enormous compared to that Challenger 2. I think it could very do well with with well with a size with a size reduction. There's a PLO one over there, so I'm like, I wanna kill it. I miss. Because I'm an idiot, right? Like, kill the PLO one, kill it, kill it, kill it. This 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 T ninety mess doesn't want to who's doing is like do I go forwards, do I go backwards, what do I do? So, um, you know, I'm decide like, you know what, whatever. I feel like doing it today. I, I want to kill this guy. I miss him completely. Bounce him off the turret. This is always amusing when that happens. I'm like, hang on, shit. I'm like, oh god, he penned me right in the, right, right in the butt. And and at this point, I was like, hang on, do I actually get it? Can I actually get out of the river? I could. It worked. Uh, just speed up the game here very quickly. So that so there's a PL one going over there. And I'm like, can I hit him? Can I hit him? No. Like yes, yes I can. Right in the side hole. This tank, to be honest, I would say it relies on you angling. Mr. Crab. But that crab is is just sitting there. To be honest, he's in a very dumb position. In all, in all honesty, he should have just not bothered firing his gun at all. I shoot where the crab's going. I'm like, can I, can I, can I pen that PLO one? No, missed completely. And the PLO one decides to move away, so I'm like, all right, well, screw you, buddy. I'll kill you. Kill the crab as well. If I was in an MBT, that wouldn't have happened. The crab would have run off. But this thing's reload rate allows it to just plow through things like load tomorrow. This is a very good support tank. It's a very good anti-AFE tank. And in the right hands, it can be an absolute terror of MBTs, especially lower ones. Because they think, oh, they're going to shoot at your turret. Bad idea, buddy. Bad idea. This is kind of where the game ends right now. I really wanted to kill that that um, A1. Unfortunately, I bounce. He runs off into nowhere. I think he might have rammed him to death. And then the Sphinx, well... <coughs> poor Sphinx. He's, he's about to get his ch nose chopped off like the real one. The Amata deals a 1,000 hit point bomb on him and he dies. Anyway, everybody... My review of the PLO-01, a very good tank, but don't play it like an MBT because it isn't one. I'll see you all to, uh, next time, and as always, stay